I grew up in upstate New York. I love the snow. Every weekend we would ski and ice skate and I learned to do all those things at five years old. The house was littered with scarves and gloves and coats. That's what you did. You threw on that stuff and you ran outside. You know, as a meteorologist, I've also spent my life and my career talking about the snow and the weather and now the climate. In this video, I'm going to share five surprising facts about snow and climate change. Fact number one, winter athletes have noticed there's less snow. For Olympic cross-country skier Gus Schumacher, snow is his air and his livelihood. It's a huge part of like what makes me happy living in Alaska. Like it, the winters are dark and everything, but if there's snow, it's, it's fun. And it makes it so I can ski and do all these things that I really love. For that, like I'm really thankful for being from a place where that's so traditionally so secure. But the snow is getting less reliable, and he fears for the future of his sport. Snow has definitely changed as I've been a skier. When I was a kid, especially at home in Alaska, it was, I never used to think about losing snow. And now it's like, you don't know. Even if there's something in January, like, it seems like it's so much easier for it to warm up now. And just to get those, like, weird big warm storms or something in the winter. I'm in Europe right now for ski racing and they've had a good start to the season. Later we go to Central Europe and that's even more like hit or miss. Last year we were there in January and there was green grass everywhere except the trails. And that's like, that's just not the same. That just doesn't feel like skiing. And according to climate scientist Dr. Michael Mann, athletes are right to be worried because climate change is accelerating. You know, it used to be that change in climate was slow enough that it happened on a generational time scale. So one generation wouldn't really know how cold and snowy winters used to be. And now the pace at which climate change is happening is such that people are seeing it within their lifetimes. Individual generations are experiencing that, seeing things that didn't used to happen or no longer seeing things that did used to happen, like regular snowfalls. So even in cold climates, snow patterns are changing. And for parts of the world, there may be a future with no snow at all. Fact number two, snow could disappear from some places. In the Southeast United States, the occasional snow falls when temperatures hover right around the freezing mark. But as temperatures continue to warm, those novelty snowfalls may become a thing of the past. If you're li you live in an area that's sort of on the southern margins of where snow is a regular feature of the climate, it may not snow a lot, but you generally get some snow in the winter. That's where you might see near disappearance of snow. Maybe in the past it happens maybe once a year, and as the earth warms, we may find that those rare occurrences of snow no longer occur. And it's because the systems that cause those will be just a little bit warmer and will be essentially above freezing and the snow that would have fallen will fall as rain. You may notice it in the spring and the fall. With temperatures just a little bit warmer, those spring snowfalls may become rain events. Those seasons, snow gets less, less frequent more of the precipitation falls as rain. So essentially you shorten your snow season on average. So that's likely to be the case everywhere, that the snow season becomes shorter. Like many of us, Dr. Mann has seen a difference in his lifetime. I spent a lot of time in Philadelphia growing up. I would spend the holidays in Philadelphia and there was snow. It had a wintry feel about it. We didn't have that. Uh, last year, and it didn't feel right to me. Um, and I think a lot of people now have that sense that it just doesn't quite feel right. In other words, the climate is changing right before our eyes. But you may be surprised to know that even in a warming world, some places may see an increase in snowfall in the short term. Fact number three, some of us will get more snow for now. You might, in the interior of the uh, U.S., kind of the northern Great Plains, that wintertime uh, snowstorms might be more intense, might produce more snow. 
it, you know, that's a real effect. You get, you know, warmer temperatures, you get more moisture being uh, drawn into those systems. Another kind of snow, lake effect snow, we're actually seeing an increase because the warmer air blowing across the cold water is causing more of this lake effect snow. But again, in the long run, as it keeps warming, we're gonna see less snow. The warming temperatures may hold more moisture and allow for more snow, but only until that temperature gets warm enough and then it becomes all rain. Fact number four, losing snow will hurt tourism. No matter where you live, ultimately, the diminishing snowfall will have dramatic economic consequences. For ski resorts that rely on snow for tourism, their location will hold the key to the future. Well, I would say the lower elevation uh, ski resorts or ski or snow recreational areas uh, are likely to be impacted the most. They're maybe already on the margins, maybe they have a shorter season, maybe already you get some rain during the kind of the winter time. It's a problem. It's a real problem for winter recreation across the country, across the world. In the long run, there is going to be less snow and that's gonna mean less opportunity for winter recreation, for skiing, for snowmobiling, for ice fishing, for things that people you know, have grown up with and feel like a really important part of their life. So it's not just recreation, it's also tourism, which is really important for the economy of many of these places. Snow sports tourism contributes about $20 billion to the U.S. economy each year, and the bulk of that is at ski resorts. But the amount of snow in the western U.S. has seen an average drop of about 41 percent since the early 1980s. That's reducing the ski season by about 34 days, a sure sign of trouble for the industry. Fact number five. Less snow means more water woes. In the Western United States, a future with less snow also means greater water scarcity. When it's a little bit warmer, you might get more snow and there's more moisture in the atmosphere because the warmer atmosphere holds more moisture. But over the long term, as temperatures keep going up, we're going to get less and less snow. And already we're seeing a shrinking of the snow cover season, a shrinking of snowpack. And that's really important because the West gets so much of its water from that snowpack. If we don't have water stored in snowpack to be released in the summer when we need it, we're gonna have to do other things to store water, like build reservoirs. And that's a problem because it tends to flood land that we use for other things or that nature is on. Also, when you build reservoirs, you get more evaporation and more loss of water. So there's not a good solution for losing that snowpack. So that's really a problem. And according to Dr. Mann, across the world, a future with deep snowpack is melting away. If you look at, for example, all of the locations where the Winter Olympics have been held over the past several decades, if you look at the projections from climate models today, None of them will have natural snow in the winter. None of those locations will be suitable for winter sports. Actually, you see various coalitions uh, of um, sports enthusiasts, uh, Save Our Winters, uh, these efforts um, by, uh, by, by the winter sports community to raise awareness that, hey, this is sort of part of our life. It's part of our identity as human beings, and we're losing that. We, we, we stand to lose that if we fail to act. For Olympic skier Gus Schumacher, his fight is now twofold. To push himself to be the best athlete he can be, and to push for climate action and awareness through his work with an organization called Protect Our Winters. Protect Our Winters is a nonprofit organization that basically just tries to mobilize the outdoor community. I've like traveled with them to Washington DC in the spring, so that's been like my big, big in-person involvement. The idea is that like a lot of these people would care about climate change because it's involved in what they do. So the the goal of the organization is to like mobilize that as a political force and uh, try to use it as a collective voice to change uh, like government policy. So unless we take action to protect our climate, snowfall will become less likely for many of us affecting our livelihoods and the winter pleasures like skiing and ice skating that we all love. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.